Uh, today we're going to present to you guys a combination of FreeBSD, BeagleBone Black, and robotics. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for being here. I know you have many talks over there, and you chose to um, see this specifically one. So my name is Ed Carla. This is Vinicius. We are a team from Brazil, and we are very, very happy to represent our country today. So uh, this is just a presentation overview, so you can you see the topics we're going to cover today. Uh, first is the project, then the prototype itself. That we, fortunately, we could bring the the prototype here, so you can see like in real life. Um, for the device tree, FTD, there was some uh, feature that we really use in our project, when we know we're going to use in the future as well, and like what we expect from this project. What is next? Uh, if I'm talking too fast, fast, please let me know because I'm a little bit nervous. So, uh, okay. Uh, so the project itself. Um, when I say I build robots, so people can say, "Oh, so what your robot does?" I say, uh, basically walks. But it's basically what I expect with a leg of robot to do. But we we went to a uh, huge path to achieve what we have today. It's not just a, like a, a a robot. So we have a robot that can be remotely controlled. Okay, cool, yeah, so one more than this. Um, so it's a robot we can control through Wi-Fi, so it's totally wireless. So you can send to different environments, you can use for inspection, you, can, you have different use um, as well as academic field. Um, the robot is the second version. In Brazil, BSDCon, so I, uh, I don't know if you guys know about uh, Vinicius, uh, created the BSDCon in Brazil last year and I, I'm happy to say that I was there and I presented the robot, the Aduka 1, the first robot. Okay, so everything started when I met Vinicius, practically. So I wanted to do something different from my um, for my project in university. I was still undergrad student when I created the robot. So he told me about FreeBSD. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea it was Big Bone Black, but I said, yes, I want to jump into this. I think it's going to be great. It's innovative. It's different. And everything we were like out of our comfort zone. If you ask me, I was using Windows for a long time in my life. I'm ashamed now that I was using Windows. <laughs> I, I have, yes. Now I have FreeBSD, I'm very happy, and was totally out of my comfort zone. I didn't know how to change directories, so it was really, really, um, I had to put a lot of effort there, and I'm very happy because now I use a machine that I know. So it was, and for uh, Vinicius, it was different because he didn't know anything about robotics. Like, he's computers, uh, computer engineer, mechatronics engineer, so we kind of use uh, both knowledge to create what we have today. Um, so if you ask me, <laughs> yeah, so, well, but it's like we've been to two conferences, so I think it's doing a good job. questions every every time every day maybe and they happen a lot and when we got in touch with a server I could use to do this setting I also reported that to the CBSE or team I opened up uh, a PR on Mozilla and say hey this setting uh, you can work uh, it works in, in, in ARM distros like Also, uh, better to uh, make use of the, the 
Okay, so I'm proud to say that's the only um, Exapod robot that runs FreeBSD for now. You know, maybe we kind of give an idea to someone else use the same thing. So, like using these different and unique features, you know, this innovative uh, concept, we decided to build one, and that's what we have. Uh, so um, we went to say thank you for the lab. They bought the the lab that we work in in Brazil. So. Uh, Laboratório de Inovação Tecnológica, they give us support uh, financially mostly and they play, so basically is this. Well, so what exactly this talk is gonna be about? I, I think you guys by now have kind um, of an idea how it's gonna be, but basically the main idea of this talk is to show the possibilities of developing a remotely operated Exapod robot, Aduka second and it's it's control system out of many resource comfort zone okay this is the how can i point oh okay okay this is aduka one and this is aduka two uh the difference between these two is the one it it wasn't wireless because we still had the dc power supply connected to it and here we have the batteries uh, we have also different features, but hardware, if you think about hardware, this is the major difference between these two. And this one wasn't walking, and this one walks. I think it makes a, a whole difference as well. Because <laughs> yeah. I said that the robot walks. Imagine I build a robot that doesn't walk. Well, it's a shame. Uh, so I'll describe a little bit of this system. It's a bio-inspired robot. Do you guys know what is a bio-inspired? probably have a clue. Okay, it's, it's inspired in a um, live creature, insects, this case. It's not a spider, the spider has eight legs and this one has only six legs. So um, it tries to reproduce the way that the insects walk and the, uh, the whole body structure. That's why it's called bio-inspired. Um, in this robot, we make use of single boards. So each board has its, its own function, and we put all of them together, and then we can make the robot walk, receive uh, commands, uh, which directions should it take. Uh, it's a ROR. I'm not sure if this is the correct classification, but I created it because it's my presentation. So <laughs> I call it remote operated uh, robot. Uh, it's powered with FreeBSD 11. Uh, one thing, I don't know if you mentioned, Vinicius, but when we started working with FreeBSD 11, it was a still current version, so they're still updating things. We crashed a few times, but we could learn a lot, you know? So, yeah, kind of cool. Um, and we do have a little bit of Python, oh, yeah, with mix, not a little bit, a mix. It's the whole, like, software. It's in Python and C. Uh, we also have a cyber client application via Wi-Fi. And I, we can, with this, we can control the 12 server motors um, via, uh, via serial communication. So that's why we have 12 degrees of freedom. So this means basically that the robot can move forward and back and turn left and right, but it can't go up and down. We, why we decided to, yeah, so, um, the harder platform. So we had to do some, uh, we had to choose. Uh, if you see insects, they have um, three, kind, three articulations. So they can go up and down, do um, 3D, uh, can move in 3D space. But why this robot doesn't do this? Uh, because we were concerned about power consumption, weight, um, we wanted to be compact. So it was our choice to have only 12 servo motors. So, um, as I said, the robot makes use of single boards, and this is the hardware platform. So BeagleBone Black is the, is the brain of the system. It's a computer, it's robust, and you can attach different um, boards to it. You have many IOs. It's very compact when you use uh, embedded systems. That's all you want. You want to create something small. You don't want something big with a higher consumption of uh, battery. So we have the bigger one, black servo motors, their articulations of the robot, that's what it makes the robot move. We have the batteries and voltage regulators boards. They, they together they make uh, the power supply, the power supply of the robot. Okay, bigger one, black, I don't know. Uh, do you guys know bigger one, black? Most of you guys, yes, uh, yeah. Great, um, so why 
Uh, so I won't talk about this. So basically, I'll say why we chose Big Bone Black. Um, well, first, first of all, that's the only that one of the boards that we had in our lab, so we didn't have to buy it. Not the main reason, but one of the good reasons. Uh, besides that, you see lots of documentation in the internet, so it made our work easier. And we had an image uh, from FreeBSD for the board. Arduino, we can, yeah, last time, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, it just came to my mind. Uh, last time then I presented, so a guy asked me, so why are you using like a computer to do only this, like move some servers, receive some messages? And then I said, well, I could use Arduino, but then I think a bunch of people had done this and I wanted to use FreeBSD, so how could I put FreeBSD in Arduino? That was my main reason. And another thing, I want to use something like big. I want to be out of my com comfort zone. I need to learn. I'm finishing university. I need to at least know a, a different operational system besides Windows, you know? So that was a, a perfect choice for us. It's very easy to use. Uh, like I said, all this other features that the board provides. Um, so embedded system, compact size, lightweight, and low power and consumption, and um, the revision C. Okay, so this is a Chinese board and it's, called, it's uh, what we use for PWM driver board. Are you guys familiar with this PWM, pulse width modulation? So that's what I use, it's the kind of signal that we have to use to move the servo. So I wanted to put in a specific position so the robot can move, so I need to apply this. Uh, the main thing is um, Big O Bone Black has only four channels, and I've seen people having troubles using four channels at the same time. So I decided to, why not use a board so I can dedicate the board just to reproduce PWMs, and then I can use um, all the features in Big O Bone Black, so I have more I.O., so that's why we decided to use this board. It's simple to use, you communicate uh, through um, um, Serial, like a word, and so I just communicate them to, I have a protocol, and I send positions to each, each uh, one of the servers. Uh, it has up to 32 outputs, so, I mean, I can control, like, you know, if I can wanna put 12 legs, I go there and I put 12 legs, and I still have some pins, like, free. Um, in this, uh, here we have two different um, power supply so basically it's this. So this is the communication protocol. Um, like I said, it's very simple to use. Um, in this case, we use um, zero, zero. Uh, at that point when we started uh, to communicate the two boards, uh, they only had um, zero, zero, which was uh, kind of hard for us because we wanted to use one or two because the pins are more accessible. So I don't know if they change it uh, by this time, but yeah, that was the one we use. And it's hard because sometimes we wanted to debug the code and we cannot do this because we are already using to move the robot. But please don't tell anyone, please. This is our secret. It's our little secret. No, we can add it. It's, it's very easy. I can do this online. I can do this online. Okay, so uh, this, uh, one of the features that we have to think here, time use it to move to the position for the servo. So there are difference if you move like this and if you move like this. So it's increase uh, the high, um, 
the current consumption and then you don't have enough strength to move the robot. So one of the things that we really have to, we had to work on this. Um, these are the servos, they are very cheap to buy. Um, they are not the best, but then with the project, we just wanted to do a prototype. We wanted to see if it worked. So it was very simple to use. Um, it, you can find uh, anywhere, China or US, whatever you go, wherever you go, you can find this. Uh, it's very easy to attach. And since we bought the frame of the robot, we didn't build it because it's not, it's not, wasn't our main goal to build the, the robot like all the parts. We just wanted to put it together so it attaches like perfectly. So that's why we bought them. Uh, and the power source, the main thing for us. So when you're thinking embedded systems, the, the main thing you have to think is how you're going to power up your system. You know, you need to give the right current and voltage. And how you're going to do this, you don't want all your boards burning all the time because of the process of the code. So in our case, since we have three diff uh, two different boards and servo motors, we have three different types of um, power. So we have uh, servo motors is 4.8 volts and big old bone blacks five. And the other board we have, uh, the driver board was six. So it was kind of nightmare for us, like imagine you have three different batteries for that. So uh, one of the guys in the lab introduced me to this amazing thing is the uh, DC power supply. So you actually you have the whole like po uh, DC power supply here. And this, um, this um, device here, as I can say this, uh, you can control the the output to be from five to 30 volts and the board doesn't get hot at all. So it's really good for the system. So we have uh, two of these and two of these. So we separated, we have uh, one power supply for servos and we have one power supply for the boards. Because when you move a servo, you can have a peak of current and you don't wanna damage your all the boards. So we decided to separate. Uh, the consumption between them, of course, the battery of the servos, you consume more because you have more servos, but then they are still working, you know? Uh, so we, div I forgot to say this like five or six slides ago, but it's fine. Uh, we divide the presentation in two main sections, the hardware platform and the software platform. And now Vinicius will talk to you guys. Better? Okay. So, um, I was saying. Um, okay. Uh, and we wanted to use uh, IPv6 because the IoT was there and we needed to pay our bills too and show the, the coordinators of the laboratory that we could uh, build a product too. So, it was interesting to use the IPv6 because it was supported in the FreeBSD. The host APD was default uh, in the basic system. And after uh, setting up a Wi-Fi network, we just set it up on IPv6 address and DHCP also. It wasn't, it wasn't mandatory to IPv6, but we did it. And the coordinator just saw that, okay, you can go further. We will keep supporting you. Okay, and here we are presenting this. And okay, FreeBSD for most of you, you know that uh, there's uh, hundreds of uh, contributors and developers and 
not just students, but uh, PhD professors and things like this, and from different areas of uh, engineering and computer science. And it was uh, not stable at that time, but we knew that we could trust to, to try it in, in the big old bond and, and things like this. And this is here just to show you our painful day because we are not allowed to flash the <laughs> <laughs> the thing. And just we need to do this all the time. Hold the button switch, and we can't kill the the, the Linux there inside. Maybe tonight. Okay, and how it started? I used this board, it's a DevKit 8000, a long time ago with uh, Gen 2. And I remembered it uh, at the day I just did the joke with Eddie Carla about the using FreeBSD in the robot. And when I tried to get it back to the big old BSD, yeah, it just turned into the crochet. So I started to build the packages with Crochet and was working and we installed the Python to, to code our uh, Wii interface uh, to do the client server thing and control the robot. And then now we tried the release.sh, it also worked to build the image. And for packages, oh dear, that was automatically there, it just needed to be fun. And when I got comfort with the uh, Poudrier, I just added also MIPS jails for MIPS32, MIPS64, and tried to build packages. And also was getting back to the community and developers and said, hey, this works, you can patch here, you can patch there. And the, the <coughs> thing just, just flew so well. Okay, after we compiled the packages and things like this, we installed the Python, we installed the, the, the package we needed. Here's the first interface for the first version of the, the robot. It's quite simple, it's just sockets. Listen here and execute the command. Here's the second version, because uh, that we Coded based on the Rui Paulo's uh, script for the rover. He used it uh, here also in the SDKM, I think. Uh, we are planning to use this uh, to get the visual feedback. I don't know when, but we we're going to try to build a, to use a camera there because there is also a support to, for the Leopard board in FreeBSD, I think, and we're gonna try it. Uh, if we need to uh, code a driver or learn to code a driver, we are trying to do this and use this, uh, I mean, not in terminal. Like <laughs> <laughs> These are the, the, the positions. Okay. okay. Yeah. Make the robot to no, it's all good, <laughs> all good. I, but I need this. I like this. You can go there. No.
do is it'll kind of not damage your battery, but then you have to really concern how you're gonna use the power you have available. So I try to make it like uh, it won't go too fast, but then I'll cheer as well. So you have like a, a collection of movements here. Every every little one piece to say which position the leg should be. So you can make it work. Uh, I think uh, this is almost the end of the presentation. Uh, okay. okay. Um, the FDT, we use this to turn on, turn off some uh, functionalities, some pins from the board. Uh, at the beginning, when the I2, I2C uh, bus, the I2C bus wasn't enabled, I, I, I think the second one, and we talked to Gonzo, if I'm not wrong, in the IRC, and he helped us to test it. Also, Luis gave us a really strong recommendation to try it. And the DTS was uh, updated in the base system, and we could use the, the, the second uh, channel. Yeah, it's or I2C is yeah, like a button. Actually, it, it works quite well, but we forgot to recharge the battery. So, <laughs> so charging in the answer part. <laughs> oh, he put this being um, dangerous. It wasn't, so yeah. You explain how why this is dangerous. <laughs> Sorry, the camera. You have to leave the full screen. So. This is. This is. Is it right or left? There. Wait. 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 Yeah. Can you put the thing like lower here? I was trying to change. Come on. Okay. You can go one by one. See, it's dangerous. <laughs>
think the code I put here is this. Any questions? Okay. Anyway, uh, so I needed to prove to my professor that the robots was working, so we spent almost two weeks uh, moving the robots forward and back. And uh, I hope you can see this video, but uh, one thing we're facing and the robot got stuck a little bit in some parts while it was moving. So the main thing we think it was is um, the battery. And I'll just show you the software works. And one thing that I thought was amazing is that we have to be stuck in space. Like I tried, <laughs> I tried, tried with my zero knowledge and I'm very happy to say that the battery is just a little bit so we can test we can we can trust uh, that the robot can Uh, actually, it's dancing Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty well. Yeah, we forget to put the song. But yeah. So, okay. Um, so as you can see, uh, this goes left and right. Uh, we are facing some, uh, I don't mean say issues, but it's just a small thing. Um, we have, it's not all the terrain that the robots can move. We don't have the, the correct, like, uh, like kind of boom for the robot. So we chose um, a terrain that we wouldn't have too many um, friction with the legs. So we wanted to, we wouldn't uh, force the, the legs to work. Um, and uh, for this kind of uh, walk, we use a tripod walk. So we have uh, two legs one side, one leg the other side, and then you move forward. And then you go like loop by loop, and that's how the robot works. And if you go sideways, we move all the legs um, this, like this one back, uh, left one back, and then front one uh, right, and then that's how we can move the robot. So, yeah, I think it's basically this. See? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, it can dance, it can <laughs> dance, it definitely can dance. Um, so I think it's basically this. Uh, first of all, Anna, uh, or uh, thank you for the whole organization of CSC camp. It was great to just give us the opportunity to present the robot. It was uh, amazing for us to do this. It's amazing to know the, the operational system now. And I hope you guys like the presentation. Yeah, thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, he's the best guy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you ever get this thing through airport security? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's the guy who knows the thing. I brought this. With a beer in this space. <laughs> 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 Thank God it's not in the US. <laughs> so he was going through x ray and then people were looking at him. I, I stopped him. I think you have a spider in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then to explain what it was, you know, and, and then so he basically brought in the thing where he brought some food from Brazil, uh, two alcoholic drinks. And this robot, and people couldn't understand where are you going? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so we are afraid that we have to leave the robot in Canada. You know, we're gonna donate to university because I don't know how to bring it back to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just some advice for border crossing. You say you're going to the Munich Opera. Munich Opera. Uh, uh, I'll see you I, I, What I'm really curious about is have you guys. I know the context is really as well as it will be, but is, it, is, it, is there like an instruction where you need to do to like replace your own kids are doing with JavaScript today, like going to Bootstrap instead of the JavaScript yeah. technique? So that's why we use it that's why we use it Python. It's really simple and we put this we will put this on GitHub or something like this. to go to academic CS, you know, I wanted to bring things to university 
And in Brazil last year, I, I presented the robot as um, like a lab for uh, mechatronics. So all the steps that you see in class, all the subject and knowledge that you get in class, you can reproduce and see the robot move. And so that was a crazy idea. It's m more fun than those uh, Lego uh, robots, no? Did they understand that? And it dance. Yes. And then the, the other score is just care about you don't have to worry about uh, real-time stuff with this? No, not yet. We are not concerned with this because we knew the speed, how it would work, and since it's a mechanical project, you don't have to really worry about this because you have the initial of the, the motor, so it will take time. So, I mean, in the future, maybe if you're thinking about controlling where the robot's going to go, this kind of data that we're going to, we might be No. Not yet. <laughs> In a small network, it, it works. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any questions, just a few remarks uh, on uh, advice. Uh, the first one, I'm not sure you, you will be honest to do this because it can't reflect the LCMMC, but you can modify the development black to have a LiPo connector. Mm. and use it directly for the work. Uh, so if, if the lab allow you to uh, program on the board, uh, I can show you I have the board modified. But uh, I don't think so. Picture <laughs> and <laughs> prove them that it, it works and uh, it, it could be cool because you can use directly on a... Uh, yeah, actually, we, we got a bigger one from uh, Nick Bug, George gave us as a donation and we were just do this in our bigger band. That was yeah. a child's game, you know? Like, the, the lab wants more of what we did. <laughs> Politics. Also, with the speaker ball screen that I gave you, it's all the testing stuff that we were talking about. Oh, yeah. So, there is some cool possibilities. Environmental sensors as well as all sorts of things. Same thing. Yeah, we have the ball design as well, but we do want to work with it also for us. You know, we get many ideas that we try to reproduce and have nothing to prove nothing. Of course, and an operation. It was 40 minutes. 40 to 50 minutes. 40 yeah, minutes. But, uh, today I found out that I bought the wrong battery. <laughs> yes, today, after six months of the project. So we think in the future, we not we think, uh, we will buy different batteries and then we can have like a, a, a larger um, screw that we can use the robot without being charged all the time. It will be kind of fun. And have you assessed for the next generation? No. Well, we, we don't think about this because first we want to be comfortable. It's more with fun, like. And we can improve more features, and then I think it's how you do it. So if there's many things move forward, that's just what I think. But we will take this with more security for the next generation. What, what's the advantage you want to see from one person on robot? I'm uh, sorry. Sorry. What would be the advantage of one so, person? So so We don't need this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this. I mean, you could put legs in your PC and
Yeah. It will do a moonwalk soon. <laughs> Not just the Macarena. It is. That will be doing. Aduka is a avatar from a game called, I think it's Gumbaud. Oh yeah, one of the guys gave the Yeah, one guy the just robot gave the name. and. Like, yeah, now we got a, just a robot. We have a name for the robot. And if you come up with a cheap brand, you know? I think Google Images can, 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 can show you. We got it from there. It was just a suggestion. We <laughs> Last question, just so you guys know. Why not net PSD? <laughs> we are working for next year, and it should be in Rio de Janeiro, but we are not quite sure. It, for here, it's more a tourist place, but I prefer Fortaleza, because we live there. <laughs>